we have um, a wonderful set of speakers on a fantastic topic. Um, I welcome Ran, who is the CTO of Epsodon. He was actually the first confirmed speaker for this conference. We confirmed Ron and he confirmed uh, during Create Frontend two months ago. And here we are, uh, two months have passed in like one second. I'm delighted to, uh, to have Ron uh, come back to the Create series and talk more about observability. And we're, uh, we're also super delighted to have Jennifer join us. Jennifer is a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft and she wrote uh, a lot of books and she is uh, a, an incredible expert on the topic of DevOps and observability. So I'll leave it with the two of you to talk more about observability and serverless. Awesome. Thank you so much, Simona. Uh, really appreciate the introduction. So today we want to talk about observability and serverless. It's one of the key components of an operable production environment. But before we really get into the discussing together, it kind of helps us to talk about what we mean by observability. So how about you start, Ron? Yes, definitely. And thank you. And by the way, I do want to show off my shirt, the serverless ASCII uh, function. Super cool. I got it that a while ago, but I, I just fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we'll have three things that we want to kick it off uh, with, uh, you know, talking generally about monitoring, about observability and about uh, distributed tracing. And then we'll kick it off into the uh, internals of this discussion. But I do want to set, you know, the first kind of, uh, of things off the ground. And, you know, what is monitoring is a question that probably can answer in a lot of ways. But for me, I think monitoring is to watch our system health. We got a system running in production. We want to make sure it is working and monitoring is specifically the way to do it um, in this case. Now, usually when we're speaking about monitoring, we have some uh, vital signs that we're looking at, it can be latency, traffic, error, saturation. All of them are good. Uh, they will give us a good sign whether we got too many errors or what's the traffic right now or whether our users experiencing slow performance, which again, tells us about our system health. And in most of these cases, uh, we rely on some agent-based approach that you know we're deploying an agent into an, a host, uh, which you know gathers all this kind of information. Then it's being visualized in another dashboard. Now I think one of the problematic things when we're thinking between monitoring and observability is that usually when we're thinking about monitoring, these kind of agents just collect host metrical data like CPU, memory, uh, you know, network disk, and things like that, which can be sometimes okay, but when we're speaking about observability, we want to have something more broader, something more complete. Now, when I'm speaking about observability, you know, again, this is probably have lots of definitions and lots of ways to uh, describe what's observability, but trying to summarize it up very quickly, it's about understanding applications, or if I'm putting the parentheses, truly understanding complex applications. Obviously, if our application is super simple, so we don't need that fancy schmack. Ron, it looks like you've muted yourself. Uh, so sorry, am I okay again? Yeah, you're okay now. Perfect. Sorry, I might probably lost my ear, ear, AirPods. Sorry. So I'll review quickly what I've mentioned before. So we got, we do have a more stricter definition for observability, at least what you know the people are saying, which concludes or includes three pillars: uh, metrics, logging, and tracing. Now I'm trying to sum it up in a simpler way because you know metrics and logging are pretty straightforward. Tracing is also something that's been here for a while, but what actually these pillars gives us, and I try to summary, summarize it up in a nice way. Metrics tells us what happened. For example, uh, slower latency in our website or number of 500 errors is in, you know, increasingly high. Then the logs tells us why something bad happened. Like, you know, we got a 500 error. Now we need to actually understand what happened in the code. And tracing, which is, it's not new, but it's relatively uh, been adjusted towards distributed applications, uh, tells us where the problem happened. Because in these scenarios, the problem doesn't necessarily happen on a single 
place. It's like the problem occurs in a certain place, but it has a chain of events that led to this problem. So traces or distributed traces really tells us uh, the story or where something happened. Now, last piece is to understand about distributed tracing. Again, distributed tracing is not something new. And the simplest way to put it uh, is look at the story on the right hand side. It's just a story. It tells us how an event is you know, moving from one service to another in our system. I could probably visualize it, you know, visualize it uh, with logs that will tell me one, two, three timelines and so on. But this is much simpler, uh, you know, way to put it about a story that moves from our client to the load balancer off, the, off service billing and, and other resource. So in other words, distributed tracing is a way to connect the dots between different services as the request is moving between one to another microservice. I would love to show quickly something about you know, how all of these things can be leveraged into observability or distributed tracing, which becomes very much powerful. And I'm going to demonstrate it through uh, a hexagon, through our, some of our environments. And it's going to be very much tailored for uh, Azure function uh, environment. So here we got a specific function. This is the hexagon dashboard. We're looking at on a specific trace. Uh, we can see here that we got an Azure function, which is being triggered by an API gateway that you know uh, listens uh, to our website. And then we got another Cosmos DB uh, that gets the request. Now, I didn't need to tell you all of this because it's pretty straightforward to see what are the chain of events and the consequences. This is, by the way, relatively simple. It's not very complex to understand what's going on, but think of what happens when I'm having 500 functions and not just Cosmos DB. And, multiple of uh, you know integrations and triggers to my function, this is getting more and more complex. And being able to understand the flow, being able to see all of the details, the metadata, the context, the actual data, for example, what kind of headers are coming into my function or exactly in my Cosmos DB, for example, which document am I uh, altering? What operation am I doing? How long it takes? These are the things that allows me to gain observability or the way I've mentioned it, really understand my system. And it can be either in this way or even in a timeline mode, which tells me you know, the, the sequence of events, which by the way, again, in this case, it's relatively simple. This function only called the, dynam the, sorry, the, the, the Cosmos DB, uh, but it can get much more complex uh, from these scenarios. Now, obviously, you we can just imagine if they, if they, if you had a bunch, you could see this, and it would be really great to see that timeline yeah. of events. Yeah, how yeah much exactly. Yeah, exactly. In complex scenarios, it's become crucial, especially when you're talking about node applications where things are running asynchronously. You really need to understand, you know, the consequences or the performance of events, uh, the way we call it. And ultimately, I'm not forgetting about metrics. Metrics are important key to understand our system. Things that are pretty straightforward, like the amount of the request, the number of errors and the type of errors, whether we're getting just an exception or 404 or 500, and then also the latency, which is important to understand because ultimately these three metrics are the things that our customers experience and that's the thing that we should optimize in order to have a better business. So I think that's it you know, with the uh, intro and the live demo. I think we're uh, good to go for a discussion. Awesome. So thank you so much for sharing. It's always so fascinating to me to see how different people think about these different terms, because I think a lot of why we have arguments is because we don't set the context of what we're talking about. So I'm going to share my feelings about monitoring observability. So coming from a background of so many years in operations and system administration and doing software engineering, it's like I, have, I feel like I've got this interesting uh, feels about monitoring. So for yeah. me, monitoring is that process of measuring, collecting, storing, exploring, and visualizing the data from your infrastructure, which includes your hardware, your software, and the people processes. Because people are critical to how your systems work. If you don't think about the people, you're going to have some really bad outages when people yeah. are super tired or burned out. Yeah. Um, so to me, monitoring helps you answer the when and why questions of your work, and it informs the business decisions that support creating sustainable environments. So mm -hmm. instead, of, like it helps you understand, should I hire more people? Like, are my engineers uh, overworked? 
I know a lot of people don't think about that, but to me, it's so crucial because if your people are tired, they're going to be making some terrible decisions. Then when I think about observability, observability is a study of a specific property of a system. I don't think about it as in pillars because I think of that as those are the tools that can feed anything that can help my monitoring, that can help my observability but I want to be able to ask questions of my system. So I think about monitoring as these are the things I know about my system and I, I, I'm going to monitor them. I know that these are the things I need to care about. I might be collecting other data that doesn't say that it, but it's what I'm presenting and sharing. Then when I think about observing my system, I, am I able to ask any question I want? Am I able to just, uh, think of any random thing and, and and debug something if needed or explore it. It's It can be really interesting. But when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter if we agree on the exact definitions. What we're saying, though, is that we see there's a problem and we're going to solve it. And so, like, let's yeah. talk about what what are those ways to solve it. So if I was a new engineer to this, like I like an engineer that was new to this topic, and I didn't know, like, w like, what do I do? What do you think day one is for solving this problem? That's a great question. And you know, many, many engineers uh, face the fact that they're seeing observability, which becomes kind of a buzzword, and they want to do observability, but they don't really understand the implications or where to start and what to do. So I think that the first thing is even a step backwards before you want to do observability is to understand what is your current pain point? Is it long troubleshooting time? Is it, you know, suffering from alert fatigue of too many errors that are coming up, but they're not very much, you know, drilling down to the real problems? Or is it just observing the system in, a, in an essence of, you know, understanding the service map and the complexity and the dependencies? So first step is just to understand what's the value that you need from observability. Once you have that question figured out, go ahead and read about it. You know, before diving into the water, you probably, you know, open a manual, you read about it, you understand best experience, you uh, discover the market, what are the possibilities in terms of open source solutions, uh, off the shelf solutions, what coming out of the box, uh, you know, from the cloud vendor. So understand, understand a bit the ecosystem. I'm not saying, you know, write a thesis about uh, observability, but at least spend a day or two in understanding the ecosystem. Once you got it out, uh, it's pretty perfect. You know where you want to be, like, you know, what's your problem? You know what you want to accomplish and you have a ways to accomplish that. So just pick a way, whether it's, you know, going with uh, in-house implementation that you might prefer or just with a third party API that will come out of the box. It's really up to your decisions uh, to do so. Now, the last thing about uh, implementing observability across the organization or in general, it's, it's true for any kind of, uh, you know, adding a new solution or uh, adapting a new way to do something in an organization, do it step by step. Like, you know, don't force anyone or everyone to do your kind of observability from day one, but, you know, try to adopt it organically and also make sure that you're um, telling your uh, decision makers and stakeholders, you know, let them understand what is the pain point that it solves for you, for you, for your team, for your department, how it can help you bring better software, uh, deliver uh, feature festers, uh, reduce the time to, uh, you know, time to uh, resolve issues and things like that. This is important because don't try to work solo. You need, you know, you need your executives alliance, uh, you know, to be aligned with what you're uh, trying to achieve. And once you'll say that, I'm pretty sure that everyone will be in the same line. They will give, you know, a green light to go with that because that's super important uh, for modern applications and modern businesses. So I kind of think of it, uh, it's good that you you mentioned sort of, I think of that as like the DevOpsing, the executive stack, like communicating in the language that they want. Because um, often we try to like throw, like this is the problem, they want a single pane of glass for dashboards, yeah. that's like not going to help. That like, they might have a dashboard, but that's not going to help me like in the trenches. Um, and one of the things I think about is how you navigate convincing management that this is actually something that's important to do. And I kind of group environments into these three buckets. One is the bucket where pe nobody's aware of anything. They don't know what's going on uh, or what solutions there are to solve the problems that they're having. They recognize there's a problem, but it's just like, ah, everything is terrible. And then two, it's like, 
yeah, we know it's a problem. We know that's available, but you know what? What we have now is good enough. And three is, hey, I heard this new term. I want you to do this project to implement this thing and get done. And like none of those, like they all have different sets of steps that you have to follow. So it's more thinking yeah. about like one of the things that you you've talked about is like how to navigate this. And it's, it's very much thinking about that step-by-step uh, process. Very first thing to me is learning and experimenting. I have this great uh, uh, past coworker who was showing some of the stuff he uh, has been implementing and uh, thinking about what questions he can ask of his system. And it was sort of like taking the data he already had. So metrics, logs, everything, aggregating it, writing a little code to visualize and be able to explore what was going on. And it helped them answer questions like, what caused this particular thing? That helped to instigate conversations about, wouldn't it be nice to answer these questions ad hoc rather than having to do all this manual yeah. work to process this? And that's like this really, like one little step towards observability even if you're not getting the tools um, and purchasing uh new platforms but you can take what you have now and start implementing things on top of it so you can start seeing into your systems so yeah. it, we've we've got to wrap up it looks like because we're all running a little behind uh so it has been so fantastic to talk to you ran thank you so much Thanks. It's been a pleasure, Jennifer. I really hope we had more time to discuss about it. But uh, yeah. Yeah, we uh, totally have to spend more time talking about this uh, <laughs> offline. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, both. Uh, that was that was so great. Uh, I must say, I am incredibly happy to see uh, Azure Functions in Epsilon. Uh, that is fantastic. And hey, Ran, your T-shirt is uh, absolutely the best. There, there were lots of comments and compliments. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, that was really, really awesome. Uh, and Jennifer, thank you so much for, for sharing your insights and sharing um, all of this really important knowledge uh, with everyone on the stream here. Uh, we're delighted uh, to continue this conversation with all of you there on the chat. Um, if you have any questions, head over to the office hours. Um, as usual, the, the QR code is on the right-hand side of this slide. Um, and then if you're interested in reading more about Epsigon, head over to their website. Um, and to learn more about observability, there's tons of resources available um, at Microsoft Learn and uh, some of the resources that Jennifer and Ron will be, sent, will be sharing on their Dev2 page. Thank you both. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Uh, hope to catch up soon.